in this short video I'm going to show some aspects of quantitative EMG. Um, we will start with the triggering of the motor unit potential and then discuss recruitment firing analysis, multi-map analysis and interference pattern analysis. Well, first we have to introduce the patient ID and also the age or birthday uh, since that is uh, necessary to obtain or to localize the correct the reference values. Height and uh, is necessary, weight is uh, at the moment not necessary. And here we choose the muscle and I'm going to investigate the extensor digitorum. We uh, insert the needle, I holding the needle like a pen and uh, with, with a slight contra uh, with a slight activation, uh, uh, I, I insert the needle. And uh, in order to, to look at fibrillation potentials, we have to, to make sure that we are inside the muscle. So I ask the patient to activate a little so that we know that we are inside the muscle. And here I am in the muscle, and we move to the, a few different places, like in the side of the pyramid. And. Uh, this patient is not supposed to have fibrillation potentials, so we can go over to the next uh, uh, step, and that is voluntary activity. We are going to uh, ask for a very slight contraction. We trigger it on the sweep, so that you uh, see the trigger level uh, up to the upper right uh, quadrant, uh, and the trigger level is indicated uh, with a yellow symbol. I move the needle to get uh, uh, a good signal and here is uh, just one motor unit that is active. In the lower right corner we look at the stability of the motor unit shape and you see that uh, on repetitive discharges it is quite stable. Here we have a motor unit potential that is uh, triggered and you see that it is, uh, has a slight complexity and you can see that there is a slight variability in the uh, shape which is normal in this uh, uh, muscle in, uh, in the patient's age. So this is a way to look at the motor unit potentials individually and I move the needle and we can increase the gain in the lower right corner to uh, to see the, the signal displayed a little better and that is the stability window uh, which uh, shows the signal in a filtered form we take away signals that uh, are below uh, 500 Hertz and we can see the stability so in general you see that the white lines there are quite okay and uh, one see spurious triggers as well. And then we start the recruitment analysis. We ask the patient for a very slight contraction and now a new motor unit is coming in. One can hear that in the background and with increasing uh, rate we see that uh, the other motor unit now is coming in and this is now we have collected a few different uh, motor units and here is the result of the uh, recruitment pattern analysis first the uh, uh, brown motor unit that came in at the frequency of uh, 10 Hertz that's called onset frequency and with increasing frequency here more in strength then we recruited another motor unit the blue one at the bottom here and then a little later a yellow one and here is the interpretation uh, the recruitment frequency is equal to the frequency of the brown when the next one came in so in this case 13.6 and the recruitment ratio is when we have a little higher uh, force and we have one 
two three motor units and the highest frequency is 14.8 divided by 3 is 4.9 and that is the recruitment ratio the white line here is the continuous plot of the uh, recruitment ratio and now we are going to do the uh, multi-map analysis and insert the needle into the muscle we ask the patient for a very slight voluntary contraction and can obtain these signals and you see how the memory boxes are filled up there are two different units now and we accept that we uh, press accept and then a, a new new recording position here are uh, other motor units and when uh, we have enough we accept that and then I move the needle slightly and we get the new motor unit we start the analysis here's a new position and we accept this these were two very similar units now we have two different units we accept this and then I move the needle a little and we start the analysis again slightly different uh, position and then we take new uh, analysis we run and here is another unit and now we have uh, 33 uh, motor units collected and then we go over to the interference pattern and I'm going to do that in short segments um, and so start and stop after uh, each second uh, so here is, is a slight contraction and we analyze and we stop the an analysis and start and I move the needle analyze I move the needle analyze I increase the, the uh, strength we ask the patient to increase the strength and we analyze new uh, electro position and we start again new skin insertion light contraction analyze S analyze and then we analyze again We analyze, we analyze, different need position for each time. Analyze, and now we have 20 uh, dots, and you see that they are outside the uh, normal limit. The green is the normal limit, so this is slightly neurogenic uh, situation. Another way to do this analysis is to, to make a continuous analysis of each uh, half second during continuous move, movement of the electrode. I can demonstrate that. We ask the patient for a slight contraction and now we start analysis. And now it's continuous analysis going on here during the uh, movement of the electrode all the time and then we can stop here now we have 34 signals and again that became uh, neurogenic Burns amplitude is uh, not edited but the multi map is edited and now we are going to edit the collected uh, multi map uh, signals and uh, here is the display and uh, we have uh, 30 collected um, motor unit potentials and I want to uh, remove those that are not acceptable for uh, regarding quality and 
copies. I look at copies first. Here is, is a copy and uh, they are slightly different so the computer has considered them as different but I don't uh, uh, believe that. And uh, so that happened to be a subjective thing. Here is uh, uh, a cursor setting that is erroneously long because of disturbance of the baseline. I remove that, that uh, as well. The signal is, is removed and here is the same thing. The, uh, this signal is uh, also uh, erroneously set. Here is another. In this case, for example, we can either remove the signal, which I prefer, but we can also uh, set the cursor manually. And when I press the, on the cursor, the amplitude goes up to 100 microvolt per division, so that all settings are made with a standard gain. Then uh, this one is the same thing. I, I removed that one. This one is upside down, probably recorded mainly from the cannula. So uh, I remove that. Here is uh, some signals that have an abnormal cursor setting. This is uh, acceptable and here is acceptable. And here the, the start of this is uh, uh, questionable. Um, but. Uh, so we don't change that and now we have 24 different uh, accepted uh, signals and we can see the plot to the left here uh, with duration on the x-axis and amplitude on the y-axis and when I want to inspect a given motor unit for potential for example this one I press on, on this one and it uh, turns uh, turns up uh, here with colors the red the, the the colored signals are recorded from the same insertional point and the red one is representing the dot and here I take this small signal I press uh, uh, on that and we, the, these are the four signals that we obtain and this little one is the uh, representing here the uh, normal values are for individual units in red and the mean value is in blue and then you see the mean value is outside and also a number of individual motor unit potentials are outside the outlier limit so this is a slight uh, neurogenic uh, situation uh, and we saw that also in the turns amplitude um, interference pattern analysis that we got the neurogenic pattern. Um, when I do the individual uh, checking of the signals, I see them also displayed, all those that contribute to the averaged uh, signal. So this was the end of the editing and normally when I don't sit and demonstrate, it, it takes about half a, a minute to remove bad signals and exceptionally change the cursor uh, setting and remove copies. So you have seen some aspects of quantitative EMG. In uh, my routine I uh, use this in nearly 100% of the patients and usually in 70 to 100% of their studied muscles. The time for multi-map analysis and interference pattern takes three to five minutes and editing adds another 30 seconds. Thank you for watching.